So I'm Jennifer Hayashida. I'm a poet and a translator and a filmmaker. I'm Benj Curtis. I'm a filmmaker, artist, um, and I often organize discussions and screenings in New York as part of a group called 16 Beaver Group. We did a series of projects and uh, represented here as a, a video and a film, a 16 millimeter film, that both draw on a multi-year research project we did about historical figure Ivar Kruger, who was a monopoly capitalist in Sweden between the two world wars, who tried to set up a global matchstick monopoly. And the ways he did that and the financial innovations were actually reminiscent of a lot of neoliberal policies that came later. And we kind of use this to think a lot about economics and 20th century history and possi political possibilities in the present. I think for us, the video came first and it was a more ambitious project in some ways because we had originally conceived of the project as an installation that would have these multiple facets. And as we realized that the installation project wasn't really f as interesting or feasible as we thought, the video became the sort of vessel for all those ideas. And so it became a much more densely layered text and it incorporates archival footage, um, newspaper clippings, our own text, footage that we shot, factory footage. I mean, there's like 10 different sources for the texts and the imagery and the sound and the music. And with the second piece, the 16 millimeter piece, Populous Tremula, I think we both wanted to make something that was really spare and far more concise. And it has the poetic component, which is the text on screen, but it also has this, to us, politically loaded footage from the factory and the wood, the timber being turned into matches basically. And so we wanted that juxtaposition, but in a much more, um, yeah, in a much more precisely guided way than it was in the essay. And I think in terms of um, generating a number of projects from the same research, we were really interested in projects where no single project would be the, the kind of master text or right. the ultimate iteration of these things, but to kind of create this architecture where different projects would lean on each other a bit. And so you, you get that in our voiceover in the video essay where we alternate, you know, there's not one narrator and it's really dialogic in a way. Like the film, we really wanted it to be a film, you know, and uh, it's shown on film and the video is, is messy and heterogeneous in the way that I think the spirit of video to us is about how like all these other things can end up in a video or pass through there and you can create connections and the film is more of a kind of formal like one line that we carry through and use that to spin things off of. I think one of the things that's been really great about this project is that we've both been very open to educating the other person and everything has been sort of like an exquisite corpse in a way where we just hand everything back and forth. And if I don't know how to do something, I'll still talk to Benj about how to do it and he'll either show me how or he'll do it, uh, which is the easiest way. Yeah. Um, and the same thing with the text. I mean, Benj's background is as a, originally as a playwright. And so he has to talk about mm -hmm. you in the third person. Um, you know, writing isn't that foreign to him, but I think when it came to talking about poetics in particular and filmmaking, we were both very invested in having it be an equal exchange back and forth. And the only exception is that a lot of the research was in Sweden and Jen um, right. was raised in Sweden and so... Uh, I was responsible like, for the translation. <laughs> like the language skills, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this, this beautiful moment that we often try to describe uh, sometimes when we talk about collaborating is actually when we pass things back and forth enough times that I will say, hey, this thing, like, like this part that you, you made, like that came out great, and Jen will say, oh, I thought you made that. And we realize it's kind of this 
this other voice that's that's both of us and neither of us. You know that it's it's not owned. Sharing and creating together and kind of co-thinking are actually really um, not just useful symbolically, but actually generate things that neither one of us would come up with on our own. Yeah. And um, I th I'll speak for myself that that's just immensely gratifying. Mm -hmm. I think that that's yeah. why we do it. So there's that myth of the solitary artist, and I think, A, I think it's a myth, but I also think that the aesthetic and political possibilities of working together are so tremendous, and I think, yeah, it, it is just really gratifying. So. The original Mexicans are not present in the powerful life of our country. Uh, you see this in politics, you see this in the media, in the television. It's, uh, so this makes me angry, makes me very unhappy in a way, because I'm, uh, I'm part of the people who has access to a private education and I have many benefits that many, many millions doesn't have. And also I, d I would like to add uh, a lot of love of my country because these people who live in the countryside, uh, they are not only poor, they are very rich in culture, they are, but they are ignored. So I, I'm trying to break in these walls with my work. I'm trying to transport some microcosmos to other space. After that, and after seeing the life of my film and seeing all the contradictions, I confirm what is my country, you know? I confirm why we are in this situation and why we have this politics and how we function or we dysfunction. My intention in making the film was to, was almost a performance, more of a performance than an actual filmmaking. And to me, what's really valuable in what I, in my project was uh, how I changed and how the people uh, who I came in contact with changed. And um, I became an immigrant there and I gave, I gave away all my power and I moved to a place where I didn't, I didn't understand anything and I was entirely alone. And I had to start from nothing, and in a, and I was hoping that that would give me a, a new perspective. And um, so, in terms of the sound, I was always kind of halfway inside of understanding what was happening, and, and halfway outside of understanding. And so, oftentimes I would be in a place, but my mind would be somewhere else. And so. I used the sound in that way so that I could physically be in one place and maybe mentally be in another. Um, but when I first got there, I really only got the gist of things. So, and I, I wanted the viewer to have a similar experience to what I had, which was just sort of entering at first at a very um, not profound level, and then um, you know eventually and being really on the outside, shooting on the street, um, very awkward sort of uh, encounters with subjects and small children and everybody feeling really uncomfortable with me, with the camera, and then...